Some pretty crazy kill potential, and with the two auras, uh, you could knock down that tower pretty quickly uh, up against that Ten centaur. Seconds. So it depends on what route Compass Gaming want to take, but still a lot of carries that could fit the bill. BBC, though, they know one they don't want to play against, and it's the Spectre. Yeah, taking that out is pretty important here. The global aspect of Ancient Apparition, plus the Wrath of Nature, plus the Haunt, is just a little bit too much to deal with, especially for lower HP heroes like the Sky Wrath. So taking that out makes a lot of sense here, and it's Ten also seconds. one here that we've seen Arts pick up a couple of times. In fact, uh, as far as carries that Arts has run, the Razor is uh, among them, the Wraith King as well. So kind of some denial picks as well. I mean, he still could run the Death Prophet in the safe lane if he wanted to, but still, obviously, that's her natural position is more in towards that mid line. So... We'll see BBC strike first for the last picks here, and uh, room, leave some room for counterpicking a little bit. Weeha likes to go for our last pick on his heroes, and because then you don't get as much counterpick play, but in this case here, Ember Spirit is going to come out before Compass's response. Yeah, good hero for uh, dealing with the Nature's Prophet. Once he gets that Battle Fury, we'll be able to cleave up those little uh, treants pretty easily. But whoa, Andy May for Compass Gaming, and that'll be your arts hero. Yeah, that's really interesting to see here. I mean, obviously he has a lot of potential in a push-oriented lineup. I mean, we already see that with the Nature Prophet, the Death Prophet, the Revenge. They do a lot to bring down towers early. But I almost feel like Anti-Mage is a pick that still should be reserved for things like counteracting specific mana-dependent heroes. You go up against uh, Medusa or something like that, then the Anti-Mage is great. But here, like, I'm not I'm trying to think of what he brings other than the Rat, other than the Split Bush. Obviously, that's pretty much across their entire lineup a really strong aspect, but uh, I guess the Wraith King uh, is the big thing counters. You can prevent Reincarnate. It costs 150 mana now, so unless you buy... Even if you buy a Soul Ring, sometimes you won't be able to get it off, but unless you buy a Soul Ring, you're very frequently not going to be able to benefit from your ultimate. Yeah, but it's not a core Wraith King, uh, mm -hmm, exactly. so... You know, yeah, sure, you can stop the support Wraith King from reincarnating, but that hardly seems worth uh, the anti-mage pick uh, by by itself. Maybe just a hero that Arts is comfortable on, and uh, could be one of those we're reading a little far too far into in terms of counter pick play, and more so just an elusive hero. Yeah, maybe gives him a little bit of confidence against the Centaur uh, in terms of reaction times, using that blink to to get away and. We'll see. I'll see if he ends up getting a quick battle fury, and uh, maybe he can find some solid farm towards the late game. Ember Spirit versus Anti Mage is kind of an interesting matchup, and who actually carries harder? And hmm. it's they sort of have different strengths and weaknesses, which makes it an interesting matchup. Yeah, I think one big aspect is the Ember Spirit is very good happen. defensively. Like the Anti Mage is going to be better to split push and to across the map do more impactfully. But if the Ember Spirit is playing on defense, all they have to do is just turtle up, win, uh, use the cleave to their effect to kill off the illusions and the treants and so on. And eventually they're going to get be in a position where they force Compass Gaming to take an actual fight. And honestly, Anti Mage isn't the strongest there. Maybe if Skyrath gets big and he has a lot of mana to burn to drop that big void bomb on him. <laughs> That could be huge, but at least for now we're going to see actually a lot of damage on Padrino. Uh oh Padrino in big trouble. We'll get off a hoof stomp, but the Chilling Touch has already come out. A few more auto attacks will bring him down as Arts blinks forward. This could very well be your first blood on the Anti-Mage. He'll chase him down, has the movement speed advantage, and Arts walks away with a huge amount of bonus gold on the position one for the dire side. And Padrino just caught in kind of an awkward position. Hoof stomp not going to be enough to keep the Centaur alive. Yeah, and uh, no matter how you weigh the pros and cons of the hero, any carrot that starts off this early with uh, 460 some odd gold before the creeps even clash is going to be feeling pretty good about himself. Gets the boots up early. Now he can even harass opponents uh, with his mana break every once in a while and just create some real problems. You're talking about this tri lane with the really good supports as potentially a tri v tri matchup, but in this case, the tri lane is going to be forced upon it's them, but they're still going to thrive because of the potency of Venge and AA. Yeah, kind of an interesting choice from BBC, and with that, we can introduce some rosters and see how the rest of the lanes will settle down. But uh oh, we might have to be patient here, Blaze, as Levy, he's rotating mid. He wants to pressure Afa Ninja, but good positioning from the DP will take defensive posture in the lane, hold the high ground, and Wraith King will be repelled. Uh -huh. So, Radiant Side, it's BBC, the Balkan Bears. Weeha will be Ooh. bottom on the Ember Spirit, Padrino. but oh, got up top. There it is. Padrino gets initiated on, whips the hoof stomp, and now Arts going back in. Oh. One more auto attack to bring him down, and Arts doesn't go for it. The salve will come off, but sent one hit from death once more in the top lane.
Yeah, PFSM was just kind of on the wrong side of the tree line there. Took a little bit longer to run around, and that's one less auto attack, which means he will survive this time around. Still a disadvantage in general, but as long as they're suppressing arts and limiting his farm, they should be able to hold, survive, and uh, continue on. The one thing I'm worried about is Centaur only has 112 mana right now. It costs 130 for the stun and one mana break, and you're not even close. So we'll see if he yeah. backs off for clarity from an ally or if he's going to be pretty much just a walking right-clicker here. Yeah, Centaur is the one that's getting the farm here, so he's trying to get near that creep wave, but it's kind of risky business every time he goes for a last hit. He is 4-3 and three compared to the 5-2 and two anti mage, so he is holding his own in terms of CS, but here we go. Initiation once more, magic missile on the levy, and boy does that chilling touch add a lot of damage as Wraith King uh -huh. gets dropped before they can even react, and that will make it a quick 2 for nil. Yeah, so right now Arts, I mean, you want to suppress him in farm, but as long as he's getting assists, I mean, he's perfectly fine with that. So getting the gold AOE bounty from the support death, and they're actually going to make the rotation. They say, okay, well, we've given up too many kills. This aggressive tri lane has essentially failed, and now the Centaur kind of shifts into this suicide role where he's just going to try to get experience, survive as best he can, because there is no kill potential against the Santa Mage anymore, and Arts knows that he goes in with the mana break and just gets three or four right clicks in immediately to eliminate any chance of getting a stun off anytime soon. Yeah. I think the thought process for BBC was to try to secure the farm for the Blink Dagger on the Centaur and just get a good tempo controller in the mid game so that these pushing heroes can't get out of control and knock down towers like crazy. I think the general thought process is good, but unfortunately here it's backfired and they'll rotate bottom to, quote, secure farm for Weeha, but he's doing okay by himself up against Nature's Prophet. He doesn't struggle all too much and he's doing fine in farm. He's sitting 10 and 3 compared to the 9 and 2 Gorak. The big advantage of having the supports here is now they can zone out Gorak. Though he won't be finding uh, much uh -oh. in the way of farm past what he's already gotten. And oh god, they dive the centaur the again up top. Death. And Pedrino seems to be on the feed train here. And this is not a good start for old Big Brad. Yeah, Central's not a hero that can rebound in the jungle or anything like that. Like, he has to be committed to keep going to this top lane, but in the end, they're just getting kills left and right whenever he's in, he is in magic missile range, which honestly shouldn't be. I mean, it's 295 MS on the Venge versus 350 on the Centaur. You shouldn't be hit by a magic missile, but if you are, then you're going down, and they're just kind of securing that time and time again. Now, Ring of Health is up on Arts. They rotate Gorek with the Treants, and they're going to look to bring this tower down here and now. Yeah, Anti-Mage cuts the creep wave, and now these little mushroom truffle things. These are weird-looking trees. I've never seen these before. But uh, they've already used their glyph, and this tower will definitely fall before the first five minutes. And KPG, with the more momentum-based lineup, I guess you could say, with the pushing heroes, will be successful, at least in the laning phase, as they take a four-minute tower. Now in the mid, F and Ninja could be in some trouble as the Wraith King rotates over, has a haste rune oh on. F and Ninja looking down for the rune, won't find it. Levy gets a couple of right clicks in, connects with the stun. Plasma Field does some damage on the low ground, but Razor can't really get in position to help out his buddy Wraith King with this kill. He will dive the tower, however, and now has another Wraith Fire Blast. Creates some space for Razor to get here. Aki will start draining a little bit of damage, but Levy will die for it. It's a one for one, and Razor will end up uh, cleaning up the Death Prophet. Meanwhile, in the top lane, yeah. Once more, rinse and repeat. Centaur gets picked again, and it is Arts that gets credit for that one. Yeah, there's like nothing you can do in that situation. Now, like, he is just too slow. He can't even hide under his tier two, for goodness sake. And when you're committing the Wraith King to dive, you know that he's not going to be TPing to rotate. So you can go as deep as you want. Vanguard coming out for anti mage here. And a lot of people will question this pickup, say, okay, yeah, I know not you got a fast minutes. ring of health, but <laughs> why don't you just go for the Battle Fury? Why don't you just go to, for the farm? And it's because he doesn't have to. Like, he doesn't have to farm against an Ember Spirit and a Razor when you can just end the game game in 15 minutes. Anti-Mage is still here that can peak really early if he goes for a mana break oriented build, and he has all the durability in the world now. He doesn't die to spells, just one value point in spell shield, and he does not going to die to right click, now he has his vanguard at 5 minutes in the game. Like, he is an immortal anti-mage, can farm wherever he wants, can push wherever he wants, and they can honestly look to end this game within 15 minutes. Yeah, and now he'll go back in onto Petrino, draining a little bit of mana, but Razor and Levy have rotated over, and it's actually a four-hero rotation for BBC just to repel the forces from the area of their secret shop. They weren't even really pushing that hard. They were just kind of lingering nearby, considering their options and looking for the opening to perhaps jump on the Centaur once more. So the Centaur from BBC will be successful in that it repels them from their side of the map, but they don't really get anything out of it. But uh, yeah, just to compliment what you said about that Vanguard, it's kind of all about the timing. If you can get it at the five minute mark, that is an uh -huh. absurd timing for a Vanguard. And now that amount of damage it blocks is, is just absurd. You use the word immortal, and I think that is 
Really not an exaggeration for uh, the state of anti-mage so far in this game. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, and Skyrath Mage should be able to find gank opportunities on him. You get the silence, you try to go for the kill. But right now, Skyrath Mage hits him for less than 15 damage when the block occurs, which is going to be like 80% of the time. It's a little bit less because of how PRD works with the numbers, but still a vast majority of the time he's going to be blocking those right clicks, and it is just going to be bad. But we do see a little bit of a comeback swing. Weeha will go for the dive using his remnants to effect, and he will be be able to burn down the nature's profit. Yeah, now Weeha is finding really good farm down in the bottom lane. Anti Mage has spent so much time killing heroes that he hasn't been farming quite as hard and is down by between 5 to 10 CS, depending on where Weeha is. He'll be able to fire Remnant right back to the bottom lane and uh, go back to farming here. Now, in that kill, Net worth uh, looking okay for him, not s not surpassing the death profit of the anti mage quite yet, but still holding his own. Uh, Nature's profit does have brown boots and going for the durability build has a couple null tallies and the orb of venom for some additional harassment, and uh, he's he's doing all right. He'll soon be level six. How's DP looking? F and NJ level seven, and appears to be holding that ultimate until level eight. Has the maxed out witchcraft. And that's the time when Death Prophet will start to come online a little bit and start moving around and maybe look to uh, chip away at some of these towers. Yeah, I think that's the timing that they need, is to get the Death Prophet to level 8 and then just start gunning down tier 1s. Uh, restrict the space for Ember Spirit to farm and make use of that uh, Vanguard. Because it's a kind of a double-edged sword picking up the Vanguard here. Is essentially, you are committed to pushing. You are committed to ending this game earlier because uh, the alternative, the Battle Fury, would have obviously extended your mid to late game potential. Korak, going to face Levy a little bit, but I don't think there's much kill potential here. But yeah, essentially, with the Vanguard picked up, they know they can't kill the Anti-Mage, so they say, okay, we just won't kill the anti mage. They let him farm slowly because he doesn't have the battle fury, and they just try to outpace him as far as spreading the map and getting more gold across the mm -hmm. board. It's kind of like going an early Vanguard on Spectre, where it sort of commits you to fighting. If you go Vanguard, then it ends up being a passive farm fest, mm -hmm. and you go for your Radiance anyway. It, it's a little bit of a wasted item, because you could have just had your farming tool that much more quickly, but here in the mid lane, Haki, he'll get jumped on. It's a four-hero rotation from KPG, and boy, that Razor feeling the hate right now. With Solitude DP's in, as will Weeha, but the Ember Spirit flies forward, finishes off the Nature's Prophet, and Death Prophet will commit for the Skywrath off on the other side of the fight. Exorcism still flying through with about half to and laying into the centaur who is trying to man up a bit. Arts will TP in, ready to fight. He is level 7 with 3 points in the mana break. And now has mm -hmm. his power treads and a Basilia, so they are ready to push. Yeah. Yeah, with the Venge aura almost maxed out, sitting at level 3, they just go right on the tower. Yeah, and I like how Arts is intentionally tanking like four or five tower shots just because he blocks the damage. It does nothing to him, he'll heal it right back up. And they're going to take this tier 1, but first they want Petrina. Yep, off to the side, Katrina will be okay, but from the back, Weeha comes in, jumps on, got him, but now the rest of KPG will lock him in place. Out comes the Sprout, nowhere for him to go, the tower will bring him down. Not worth the overcommitment for just a vengeful spirit. And the tower did end up falling, Nature's Prophet got the last hit, now Arts goes in onto Haki. Will he have enough to bring him down? Does have a mana void, but won't be able to burn enough mana to make it worth his while. So, sort of a, an interesting hold from BBC. Weeha did get a couple kills before getting picked off, but KPG still ultimately got what they came for and further their net worth lead here. Yeah, and uh, this is the position that you won't see your typical anti-mage. Just jumping in, four-man Dota with him, that usually is crea Ooh. space creation across the map. Looks like that was an Ice Blast snipe. Yeah, at the fountain. Oh my gosh, just trying to get home, just trying to find something to get yourself back into the game. But in the end, Agoric gets a regen rune. They're going to look at Roche. And uh, I think the medallion, no, the medallion's not up on the quarry yet, so it will be a little gradual, but they just can't catch a break. Yeah, certainly not. Even in the mid lane, the Ember Spirit catches the anti mage in chains, does all the damage that he can, but Art's just a, a little too tanky for it. And we'll be able to blink to safety and uh, sip up a bottle as he gets some extra hit points. So. They do indeed go in onto Roche, the minus, minus armor from Venge, making this a little bit easier. BBC, they oh, yes. seem pretty suspicious. Uh, Ember Spirit is lingering around the pit. They see Atha Ninja. He does have his ultimate coming up in about five seconds. Stampede in from the Centaur, but they'll go on him right away. PSM, almost the target of choice. They lose the Centaur to get this fight started. Ancient Apparition goes down. Art standing his ground. There's your Mana Void, and it will take out the Razor. Now they lose their Wraith King once more. Uh, Weeha on the run. Exorcism trying to chase him down. He does have face boots up, so he is rather elusive. Moves into the tree line, but oh. Atha Ninja will find him, secures the kill. Skywrath Mage, the only one that survives. He does TP back to the base, but it's a four for one. KPG will be happy to trade their Ancient Apparition for that fight, and now they will secure the first Roche of the game. That's a 1700 net worth change in favor of the Dire Blaze. 
Yeah, that's absolutely insane. They got the Aegis now on Anti-Mage. The Nature Prof is still able to go for a Midas to accrue even further advantage, go for two big items instead of one for his next pickup. And uh, there is a progression that I want to talk about here. Arts is going for Crimson Guard Anti-Mage. I do not think this was what he set out to go for at the beginning of the game, but seeing the tempo that has been brought, he thinks this is a great pickup. You give that 50 damage block to Death Prophet with her Exorcism up, and she gets that immortality effect as well. She's going to have a Yules very soon. Yeah, there it is. And with the Crimson Guard buff for that 9 second duration, you can take any fight you want. This is yeah. really just the incredible tempo Compass Gaming have pulled out just for a few kills, snowballing it forward. Yeah, and you know, this is another one of these items where it's all about the timing. Uh, the Crimson Guard will block 50 damage for 9 seconds per auto attack, and just looking at how much these heroes hit for, that's a huge amount of damage, redu damage reduction. It's more than 50% across the board. The Ember Spirit, the only one hitting for over 100. Everyone else, it'll just be hitting them for kittens. It's not going <laughs> to do a hell of a lot. So it's, uh, you know, one of those items that, hey, 30 minutes in, it helps, but not the biggest deal. At the 13, 14 minute mark, uh, your team is nigh unkillable from auto yeah. attacks, at least. And that means they can go for non-combative items on the other hand. Like, you were looking at the Nature Prophet, he gets a Midas. Uh, PSM is also going for one. So they're going to have two Midases on their heroes that do the global ultimates, which means that they're going to get level 16 a little sooner, and they're going to get those Ags upgrades. Well, maybe not the Furion. I haven't seen an Ags Furion in quite some time, but at least on the Ancient Apparition. And that is going to be just of the, of the utmost value. It looks like he's going to get dived here, may delay his Midas a little bit, but the TP rotation, it's a kind of a pseudo bait, and he's juking and jiving in the trees perfectly! Oh, and Flavi gets silenced. PSM's gonna live. Oh One hit point from death, but he's still alive. Oh, oh. and they had to, that was, I mean, they could have Yules them immediately if they really needed to get the Ancient Apparition out of there, but man, they just, they just man up. And they yeah. do well. Vigil Spirit will go down to the bottom lane. He was kind of left high and dry there, so we have, will pick that one up for himself. But I don't know. He needs so much more farm to keep pace with the defensive aspect of what Compass Gaming have brought this far. Yep, so 14 to 6. KPG still holding on to a pretty sizable lead here. Anti Mage very close to his Crimson Guard. Just goes on a uh, key up top and just cutting through that mana pool of the Razor. Thinking about his options, and Haki will sip up the bottle and be all right. Meanwhile, in the mid, Afa Ninja may get rotated on. Levy's on the high ground, so is Solitude. They'll smoke up. The DP breaks it, pops both their smokes as she makes the rotation up top. Art's going blow for blow with Haki, and Gorek, he's already come in to help him out. Ice Blast flies through, finishes off the Razor. They will lose the Anti-Mage, but hey, he's got the Aegis of the Immortal. Gorek does get finished off. Yules to stop the Ember Spirit dead in his track, so Anti-Mage can bring him down, but he'll take a silence from Solitude and that will ensure the survival of the Ember Spear. And now a stun into the Mystic Flare, but Anti-Mage, he's got at least that value point in Spell Shield, and it won't really bring him that low. Ember Spirit got out with like 20 HP there, was able to activate Fire Remnant to the bottom lane just in the nick of time. And man, if they had lost the Ember there, I, I feel that that would have been like the beginning of the end. Like once you lose that much momentum on your carry and give it over to the opposing carry, there is not much you can do to come back from it. But he survives. They still cling to his hope of building up this. Uh, there's two options, obviously. The Shadow Blade is extremely uncommon, but still kind of effective if you use it right with the Sleight of Fist. Otherwise, the Battle Fury is the item of choice, and that can still do a lot of work. Yeah, now in the bottom lane, KPG move into the Tier 1 tower. Glyph comes out, but they'll be able to bring it down uncontested. BBC not in a great spot to really do much in the way of slowing down that push. The Ember Spirit, as you mentioned, moving into the Battle Fury, I think, with that uh -huh. Claymore first, but you never know. Uh, Phase Boots drum already picked up, so still a nice, well-rounded build. There's your Crimson Guard delivered, and PSM Ooh. bumps right into Weeha, and he will end up going down. There's a Fire Remnant down, so the Ember can just hop back to safety and does find a little bit of a freebie. In the mid lane, Art's going blow for blow with the Drino, but down bottom. It'll be a double damage death prop, who's already exercised this Tier 2 tower. There's your Glyph straight away, Silence on two. Two TPs coming in. Levy taking a lot of damage, but will be able to survive the onslaught. Now Anti-Mage also rotating back down. Haki in the front lines. Plasma Field kind of off the mark as Arts coming around the backside. He's just going right into this fight. Silence on two once more. He's stuck inside of the Shroud. Anti-Mage hops inside with him, and they'll just click him to death. She is. Uh, death Rocket finishes off the Tier 2 tower. Ember Spirit lives, but high and dry is Solitude. Yep, don't even need the Ice Blast for that one. They just cleaned it up, no problem at all. They're getting so much momentum with that Tier 2 finisher. They will have to wait a little bit longer for the Exorcism to come back into play, but Afo Ninja walks away with 3,000 gold. Like, he can just buy a Reaver very shortly. He's going to sell an item, pick up the Vip Booster? 
I don't know why if you had the gold for it, you wouldn't just go for the full thing. But, oh, he's going casual. He goes casual plate build, casual vit booster. This gives him options to build up towards whatever he needs. Shiva's guard might be the option, and the vit booster might just be that little bit of extra HP to work with there. Yeah. And this gives him a lot of effective EHP right now. I think part of it recognizing that Ember Spirit is their big damage dealer, and he's doing a lot of physical output, so wants to get some armor so that Sleight of Fist doesn't hurt nearly as much, and so when he's chasing her down, clicking away with those fiery swords, she may actually have a chance to survive. Anti-Mage and Illusion Rune will try to bait with it. And look at Levy, he's so scared of this thing. And it's just an illusion. They'll use the Static Link, and they still haven't figured it out. They haven't hit it yet. Maybe they've realized some of the damage that he's not hitting so hard, but uh, we'll distract them a, a fair bit at least with these two illusions as the other one comes in. Uh, cheeky little anti-mage as KPG group up towards the top lane and they just want to keep this tower momentum. They'll move into this tier 2 tower and they'll go in onto Weehai. Takes a silence and a Yules, but will fire Remnant to safety. Out comes the ultimate from the Centaur. Really to little avail. Her key still may go down. Getting clicked pretty hard. Barely makes it to survival. Levy falls. He'll have the reincarnation, so he's coming right back up. Searing chains on one, but the swap straight away. They really want this Wraith King and they will find him. Art stunned up. Oh of a Mystic Flare, just barely survives. Ice Blast flying through, hoping to catch someone. And, uh, well, it will clip the Ember Spirit as well as the Sky Wrath Mage. They end up picking up a 3 for nil. So, well, Hell Zero's on the side of KPG. But they keep them all alive. One TP gets cancelled. Second TP gets cancelled. Oh, and now this Tier 2 Tower falls. So, even a little bit of extra gold coming out here, boys, as they waste a few TPs. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be on tilt when you're up against this. You're like, oh, anti mage farming game. Let's do this. Okay, let's spread them out. Oh my gosh, what's happening? This is 17 minutes in and we're losing our tier 3. You just gotta be in panic mode. Like, they really are clearly on tilt, but who wouldn't be in this situation? It's something you never expected coming out of the draft, and it just shows the, the versatility of Compass Gaming to, to find these opportunities. You know why they're actually upsetting these tier 1 teams is because they find these openings to do things a little differently. Just kind of catch the opponent off guard, make them think you're doing one thing, and show him the right hook. But yeah, we'll see Ember Spirit look to pursue. On to the Death Prophet. She does have the Invis Rune now bottled up, but also has wow. that Yule. So we'll see what she does next. Uh, just dodging out, trying to dodge a Magic Missile. Will not be successful, and he's actually going to pursue on to Gotham. Yeah, I mean, on the other side, Athenjay does get finished off. The Mystic Flare does a lot of damage, and they get a cleanup kill onto the Vengeful Spirit. So that ends the monster kill streak of the Death Prophet. And looking at the recap, wow, 2,500 net worth going to BBC. Some of that rubber band uh, coming into effect there is the Wraith King, actually the big breadwinner, making about a thousand gold off that. But really just pennies compared to the huge net worth that KPG have picked up. 14,000 gold lead before that little skirmish, so that'll make a dent, but they still have a long way to go before this game is looking a bit more leveled out. Yeah, Death Prophet was definitely the highest net worth there. The amount of last hit she's gone on towers and so forth has fueled her momentum, but uh, taking her down a notch, at least the Wraith King will get something. Curious if he does go for the Soul Ring here, just to try to get more reincarnates out. Obviously, you want to put your gold towards something useful, maybe a Blink Dagger, but when your back's against the the wall in your base, it might not be the most contributional effect. Uh, for those that don't know, Soul Ring, if he uses it, if he's down and has almost no mana, and then he uses it, he will get 150 mana, but he has to Magic one on top of that, and also his Killing Blow cannot be from the Anti-Mage. If the Anti-Mage right-clicks him, the Mana Break takes effect first, and he still loses enough mana to not reincarnate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Uh... Important mechanics to note, for sure. DSM has his Midas up and just working on that Aghanim Scepter. Point booster and only 2,300 gold to go before he has that big Ags upgrade to make that snowball hurt so much more. Anti-Mage now moving into his core Manta style, has the Yasha and a little bit of gold to spare. It'll be a little while before he gets that ultimate orb, but still on his way. Pings out uh, in this general direction. Levy's actually pinging them out. And uh, Skirmish very well could break out here in the Radiant Jungle. Gorak is kind of ratting in the bottom lane, or at least trying to. Has himself the Maelstrom to go with his two Null Tallies. So pushing into the Tier 3, but Weeha as well. Fedrino will come to the defense. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Haki will get initiated on Gorak. DP is up towards the top lane, has the Sprout. Courier flying through, he will be able to live. And Razor not going to be so lucky. Afeninja with more than enough damage to bring him down from the Crypt Swarm. And those right clicks of the Prophet certainly didn't hurt. Yeah, I don't know what you do at this point. I mean, when you have the 40 uh, uh, increase attack speed slow from the Shiva's Guard on top of the Crimson Guard that you're going up against, you just get nothing. Levy's going to go down here pretty quickly, but he will be stampeded out. Mystic Flare kind of wasted, though, on Arts once again. 
Yeah, off to the side, another fall breaking out as Pedrino gets stuck inside of the Sprout. That'll be enough to bring him down, and in the main fight, the Ray King and the Skyrath get brought down by the Anti-Mage and the Prophet, respectively. Uh, Weeha trying to do everything he can to delay this push, but Razor was picked off before the fight even started. Their glyph just cooling down. They won't use it for the tier two, but they are out of outer towers, baby. And KPG, maybe not quite death push here, but this will be crippling damage. Glyph comes out. They've still got a little bit of time on the Death Prophet ulti to lay into this tower, and they'll just rotate up top with the racks are exposed, and they can go at it. Haki gets stuck inside the crowd next to the anti mage, never where you want to be. They'll find the kill there, and now Weeha pressing forward again, doing as much as he can. We'll scoot back to the well. Maybe they'll find a kill on Gorak. They will, but it'll cost Levy his life. Solitude will do everything he can. Gets swapped, gets stunned, and ultimately gets killed. Now Siri on the arts. Pedrino comes in. Hooks off. Wants the double edge, but the silence stops him dead in his tracks with that long pass point. Now they turn it around, give him a taste of his own medicine as he gets chopped in half, sent right back to the grave. And KPG still with all five alive. Tiss, absolutely insane. They don't get the racks that they came for, but they do force the buyback there. Uh, Nature Prophet actually is the one to buy back, but obviously the Wraith King as well. Um, I think that the, the timing now is just go for Roche. Gorex already makes his way there and drops some Treants in the pit, and that'll be the next Aegis. So it doesn't matter really who you put it on. As long as it's a core hero, they're going to be able to make a huge use of it in the base. Yep. So you're right, uh, Gorak did die there in buyback, but still another huge exchange. 20,000 gold, now about 12,000 experience in the Dyer's favor. Uh, Aegis, I think you could still give it to the Anti-Mage. He's still their frontliner, hopping in and being kind of a bully. So he still seems to make the most sense. He does have his ultimate orb and farming the bottom wave while they move into the Roche pit, just trying to get enough gold to finish up his Manta style. And with the Roche going down, that should be enough just to push him over the edge. Aegis will hang out in the pit for a little while longer. Looks like they will indeed save it for arts. And uh, now an Aegis of the Immortal and a Manta style. Yeah, he's a lot scarier than he was in that last little skirt there. Most definitely. This is 3 a.m. This is, I've finished farming and I haven't even stepped out of the lane to do so. Like, he only has a CS count of 97, which is extremely low for an anti-mage, but he's in a commanding position in this game. The Manta style's coming out, the mana burn's gonna be real, and uh, this mana void is gonna just take somebody from 50% to nothing in three seconds. They go for the quick right clicks. They don't have that much mana to work with right now, but they also don't have that much HP. Battle Fury will come out for Weeha, though, and it comes out in the nick of time essentially this has got to be their last stand i mean they've got to burn through the creep wave as best they can oh hopefully it doesn't get silenced here oh they get the stun on him he actually bounced back to the wrong oh. position oh. and he gets finished off without buyback that wow. was not the base defense they needed yeah, definitely not. He doesn't get silenced with the stun more than enough to lock him down. Now Exorcism used on the tier 3. No glyph available. You see the Wind Ranger respawn from Haki going, oh boy. Yeah, that's not what we were trying to do there. He'll get left behind. Gets finished off despite the Centaur Stampede. Pedrino hops back in thinking, hey guys, let's try to do something okay there. I've done all I can. I'm going to go ahead and take a little nap. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of it. Good game. Well played. BBC will tap out and Compass Gaming. Looking very strong in this game one for today's day three. EU coverage for the Summit 2 by G2A.com. And Blaze, like you mentioned, I don't think they were planning on doing that with the Anti-Mage, with the mixture of getting that early first blood before the creep.